Have you heard about the sensation that's sweeping the nation? That's right, the glamorous, glorious, downright stupendous way of getting those film photos off of that film and onto a computer. DSLR scanning. Shooting film involves a lot of different phases that you go through along the way in order to finally actually view the pictures that you've taken. Scanning is an art kind of all on its own, and there's a head-spinning amount of scanners, techniques, gadgets, and gizmos, and worst of all, random opinions on the internet about what's best, cheapest, easiest, and fastest for digitizing your photos. A few weeks back, I was contacted by Arold, who is the co-founder of Valoy, and he asked if I would be interested in trying out the Valoy 360 film holder, an upcoming unit available for pre-order right now that is incredibly helpful for getting into the world of DSLR scanning. To which I, a young film enthusiast, of course said, Yep, first a quick word on uh, film scanning. Once we've got a developed roll of film, you're often left with a negative version of your image that's captured on the film, which means that you need to get this thing inverted properly and either digitized or printed. Now printing film, like actual darkroom printing, is an incredible art, as old as the format itself, and it's not my area of expertise. I'm more than willing to admit that. But scanning film and the advancements and setups that go along with it is something that I'm really interested in and kind of have a pretty good knowledge of. If you have scans done at a lab, they might be using a really high-end machine like a Noritsu or a Fuji Frontier scanner. Machines that are great, but expensive and not really accessible to one such as myself yet. For home scanning, we've got a bunch of different options like Epson flatbed scanners, including the V700 that I have, Nikon cool scans, pack-ons, apps, or DSLR scanning, or camera scanning, technically, if you're using a mirrorless camera, it doesn't really matter. DSLR scanning has really gained a lot of popularity, especially over the last five years or so, as digital camera sensors have increased in quality and become cheaper. The idea here is that you take a quality digital camera, outfit it with a macro lens, position it above film that is laying flat, which is also above a light source, and then with the click of a button, you've taken a picture of a, of a picture that you had previously taken on film, and but uh, now it's digital. Seems a little strange maybe. The idea of like taking a picture of a picture, but there are some great results to be had with a good setup here. Now of course one of the big roadblocks for camera scanning is having a decent digital camera to scan with. And for myself, the best digital camera that I have is the one that is recording this video. So I just want to dip my toes into the world of DSLR scanning and see the results that I can achieve without breaking the bank in the process. So let's start with talking about the Valoi holders and exactly what Valoi offers. This setup currently offers two holders, a 35 millimeter film holder and a medium format 120 film holder. They're solidly assembled plastic pieces that allow you to feed the film into them and keeps everything flat while you're capturing your frames. It's also oddly satisfying to just thread a roll of film through these and it's super easy. It goes in really smoothly and I don't feel like I'm damaging the film with these holders because there's very little points of contact on the surface of them. Valoi offers these holders as standalone choices. They're super bare bones and you can toss them right on top of a light source and just go about capturing your frames. Very ideal if you're not looking for anything insane. And especially if you don't scan that much film at home because I see a ton of people going all out on really intense home scanning units, expensive DSLR scanning setups and everything like that, which is only necessary if you're scanning a ton of film yourself. And not everybody does that. There are a lot of people who are just like casually scanning and developing and shooting only a little bit of stuff that they handle themselves. You can also go further here though, and Veloy offers the advancer unit that incorporates a simple set of rollers and a base for these holders to sit on above a light source. Now just to clarify, this is a beta unit that I was sent, so there are some small adjustments that are being made before they officially launch next month. The advancer is metal and it does feel super solid. We've got some little legs that you can adjust the height of and there's rubber caps to prevent it from shifting around. We thread our film into the holder 
And once it catches on the little rubber rollers, then we can easily advance things along. The rollers can be adjusted in order to accommodate 35 millimeter medium format and 127 film as well, which I believe has a holder that's planned in the future for that film. It's super nice and simple. It touches the film only along the edges for transport. So there's not much touching the rest of the actual film at all during this use. There are a lot of these units popping up for DSLR scanning. Besides the Veloy, you've got your choice of the essential film holder, the pixel later and the primo option the negative supply stuff. Those are holders that I haven't had a chance to use myself. I've done some research and they all seem to have their fans. Negative supply is huge and by far the most expensive, but also like very quality made stuff. The essential holders are cheaper and have a good variety of masks and holders, but I'm happy enough with Valoi that I don't have a desire to really try the other ones. The holder really does accomplish everything that I would want for someone like me who does a very medium amount of scanning my film at home. I'm in the process of easing into camera scanning and seeing what I can accomplish on the cheaper side of things. This is my digital camera. It is but a humble Lumix G85, which is a micro four thirds digital camera. It's nothing crazy. And I don't do a lot of digital photography like at all. I bought it so I could use it for videos on the channel. So I'm not really motivated to make a purchase for something much more expensive if I'm only gonna use a camera for scanning. I do recommend for more serious people to take things up a notch and probably seek out an APS-C camera that has a larger sensor. Ideally like 24 megapixels would be good because I've seen some great results from setups like that. Alternatively, go even higher and start diving into full frame digital cameras, but uh, those are still largely expensive and probably a purchase that you would wanna make if you're also doing digital photography and like video and stuff like that. With my Lumix, I've adapted a Canon FD 50 millimeter macro lens. Uh, you can look into newer digital macro lenses or mess around with like extension tubes for lenses as well, but I found extension tubes to be kind of annoying and like awkward for this stuff, and harder to like get a good focus. Exploring the offerings of vintage macro lenses though seems to be a pretty common thing to do and something that a lot of people do recommend. Also, uh, purchasing this means that I can use it on multiple cameras because it is also an FD mount lens that I can use on my film SLR. So that's a pretty solid purchase. I've also got uh, just a USB Huon light pad, which is nothing special, but especially for black and white, it should be fine. I have seen it recommended though, that when you're scanning color negative film, you should probably get a higher quality light source, something that has a really nice color rendering index, which uh, would be above 90. And I've got this tripod that can rotate and I can aim straight down over the film holder. Lots of people will buy copy stands and I have not gotten around to buying a copy stand yet because again, how much am I really using this? And uh, I'm not made of money right now. This isn't a fantastic setup, but the point right now is to kind of see the results that I can get using the Veloy holder, along with some kind of entry level gear in order to just scan some negatives. So here's my setup with the camera and a macro lens over top of the film holder on a light source, as well as just some little other things here, a cloth for cleaning the film and a pair of gloves, which is really important for handling the film. I also really recommend getting a more appropriate sized light source because mine is big. So I'm having to cover kind of the edges so that I don't get a lot of excess light coming in. And I'm setting my lens to F8 so it's nice and sharp. The camera is also already leveled, so it's got to be nice and straight above the film so that you're not shooting at an angle. And it's also really useful to have something that allows you to control the camera without touching it or pressing the button yourself so that you can avoid any unnecessary movement. I've got it synced up to an iPad here so that I can adjust my shutter speed and take a look at everything and capture it just using the iPad. You also want to use the lowest ISO that your camera has to avoid any unwanted noise on the digital side of things. And I'm also white balance to my light source. And then we just scan or capture, whatever you wanna call it. Advance the film through, take your picture. When you're exposing on the digital camera, a lot of people suggest exposing for just one stop over and just try and keep a consistent exposure for the roll so that you have an easier time when you're editing your scans later. Most of my films are already cut into strips and stored in archival sleeves. So it does take a little bit longer when I'm doing camera scanning. It's not too hard to deal with strips when you're working with the Veloy holder, but it does take more time. So the fastest way for all of this is to scan rolls that are completely uncut. You 
can just scan the entire roll at once and then cut it up and put it into protective sleeving later. Now that I've captured all my frames, then I just have to do a bunch of editing. So there's just cropping and straightening and then converting everything to black and white because if I'm shooting black and white before I can finally just do an inversion. And for inverting black and white, it's really simple. You can just do a basic invert. I'm just working in Photoshop with this stuff, but you can also use Adobe Lightroom, which I use pretty frequently as well. And then I want to go in and adjust the levels so that my contrast is looking better, of course, after just doing a basic invert. So let's take a look here. I've got some samples off of a scanner at the lab, which was a Noritsu. Also scans off of the Epson V700, which is my flatbed using the program Silverfast to scan, and my camera scans, which have now all been inverted. Also, all of these scans are sized at 12 inches by 18 inches with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I think camera scanning for black and white can be done pretty well overall. It's not hard to handle these scans and do a proper inversion and just get good looking images and solid contrast. There's so much less involved with black and white in comparison to if you're scanning color. My camera scan shots are pretty grainy and that's the issue that you're getting if you're using like a mid or like lower range digital camera is that you're probably gonna get a lot of digital artifacting or digital noise, elements that are added in from the camera side of things, which is ideally what you want to avoid and what you would get if you're having a higher end camera. But of course, that's a bigger investment. The camera scans do look pretty sharp though, all things considered. So I definitely do think that the macro lens I have is nice enough for what I'm doing. These black and white shots aren't as sharp as like Noritsu scans, of course, but they are somewhat sharper in comparison to 35 millimeter black and white scans that I'm getting off of the Epson. And I'm finding it easier to handle black and white negatives that have a variety of like exposure and contrast in the scenes when I'm doing camera scanning in comparison to the flatbed. Like the camera scans still leave a good bit to be desired, but I'm not disappointed. And especially for like posting to Instagram or using for purposes in these videos to educate and to use as samples, and then the camera scans for the black and white stuff is not a bad choice. A lot of this stuff, of course, is going to pale in comparison to the Noritsu because the Noritsu is designed to handle all this stuff. But for being able to do this at home, I'm not disappointed for black and white. Now let's talk color film. Color negative film is a tricky thing to work with outside of machines that are dedicated to handling like the inversion and interpretation of color. You can't just do a basic invert of a color negative frame like you can with a black and white negative frame and expect to just have good results. With color, we're scanning the same way. This stuff is also in strips too, which is a bit annoying, but it's okay. So I could kind of illustrate what most people are using. I did buy Negative Lab Pro. It's a plugin that's dedicated entirely to converting color negative scans and it costs a hundred dollars which is probably pretty expensive for a lot of people and there are some free options that I can talk about in a minute but negative lab pro is the one that I decided to go with so I have so that I can show it off and talk a little bit about it in this video but probably also in the future as well with everything in Lightroom I've straightened them and cropped them already so that I can just pull up negative lab pro convert the negatives and then it will flip the color and give me okay color. Again, I'm not working with an incredibly high-end digital camera, but my experience with Negative Lab Pro over the last little while has shown me that it can be inconsistent, but there is a lot of control and the ability to adjust easily for your color. There's also a sharpening option in Negative Lab Pro, and there's a few different ones here, but I'm using the lab sharpening option, and this does kind of help to sharpen out the grain and also removes a little bit of what looks like color noise to me. It kind of like just makes the grain look a little more natural, and it's definitely not a bad program to use when you're working with color. It is really accessible in terms of just being able to adjust your highlights and your shadows and your contrast and your white balance, and then also just the colors in your mids, your highlights, and your shadows. But also handling color is a lot of work. To get good color and consistent color, you need to put in a lot of time to play around with this and really get things to a point that look Good. And let's do another quick comparison between Noritsu scans, Epson flatbed scans using Silverfast. And for the colors on the Epson scan, I let Silverfast handle the colors. And the camera scans, which are Negative Lab Pro. This is where I'm not super impressed, especially with my setup. And I know people are getting incredible color results using 
higher end digital cameras, mirrorless cameras, things that are really expensive. But for pretty much everything here, I greatly prefer the Naritsu results, which is no surprise because that machine is built and dedicated to handling film and scanning and color inversion and all of that. The camera scans are definitely not anywhere as sharp as the Naritsu scans as well. And I'm finding it harder to really get like good looking skin tones on everything and have highlights or shadows that don't have weird color cast to them. And working with Negative Lab Pro is a whole other art in itself of being able to get really good scans and really good color. But working with color and scanning at home on like flatbed scanners and just any of this stuff is a lot of work. And it's not something that I really have a huge desire to do. I think if I was scanning color and wanted good color results, I think I would have to significantly up the setup in terms of the gear that I'm using, which is kind of a big step up. Another big drawback to scanning color film using a camera scanning setup is the lack of digital ice or anything that can remove dust and elements that are on your film as you're working with it. Flatbed scanners and like lab scanners have the ability to do an extra pass and remove a lot of hair and artifacts and dust and anything that's just on your film when it's being scanned. Camera scanning more often requires you having to go in and edit these scans and clean them up in order to remove anything that's on the film. It's something that I'm used to with black and white because you can't do digital ice with black and white, but for color, it's a big drawback. Overall, I'm still really inclined to have a lab scan all my color. And that probably will not change anytime soon, but I am relatively happy with my results for doing this stuff with black and white film. And because my camera isn't like a super high-end camera at all, I haven't really explored doing a lot of medium format here. But it's not awful, and definitely the Veloy holders accommodate 120 really well. The 120 holder on its own is set up for a 6x9 sized frame, which is what I shoot with my Mamiya Universal. But if you're shooting different frame sizes, then I would really recommend that you invest in some masks for this, which Veloy is introducing very soon. For now, with medium format, I am going to leave that stuff to the flatbed scanner. Flatbed scanners are also not perfect, as I've said. And one of the big annoyances for a lot of people are using flatbed scanner holders, like the film holders that go on the scanner. There can be annoying to work with, and there are a lot of options when it comes to that, and a lot of improvements over just the basic ones, but that's a big drawback for working with flatbed scanners. If you are playing around with color scans and you are looking for a program to invert things, but you are hesitant to invest in Negative Lab Pro at the moment, you can try out Grain to Pixel, which is a free plugin. There's a program called Film Lab that will invert negatives. And there is also a plugin called Raw Therapy. These are three options besides Negative Lab Pro that allow you to work with inverting color negative scans. I'm mostly still just trying to get an idea of what's possible with DSLR camera scans scanning before I dive in and pour a lot of money into like getting a better camera or like more advanced stuff. If I was going to make some improvements to my current setup, then it would probably be a, a better light source, something that is smaller with a higher color rendering index to it. This is just kind of like a cheap USB light pad that I had and maybe a copy stand so that it's easier to like set it up and it's easier to adjust the height of the camera so that it's easier to focus. But at the moment, I'm pretty happy with my basic camera scanning setup and especially with the ease of using the Veloy holder. I do recommend it to people who are getting into the format, who have a little bit of money to drop on something that definitely makes this whole thing easier, who don't want to like DIY something and who are somewhat serious about this whole thing. Like it doesn't have any immediate drawbacks that I've encountered from just doing a little bit of light casual scanning. And it is really easy to just like adjust and swap the plates out and feel that it is safely handling your film. My only big main concern with this unit is the rubber rollers here. They are pretty tough to move to the different grooves and I am somewhat concerned about them breaking. However, the manual does say that it will be shipping with several extra of these. So they are easily replaceable if something does happen. You can't do uh, borders, like you can't capture the area above the image around the uh, perforations, like the sprocket holes, which people definitely love to do, and sometimes you definitely don't need to do it. Aloy may of course offer something in the future that can do that, but uh, currently they do not.
These holders in the Advancer are available for pre-order now with an expected ship date of June at the link in the description below. Several accessories for this system, including medium format masks, are also available for pre-order now as well. I'm aware that this barely scratches the surface of DSLR scanning, but it maybe gives you an idea of what can be done without going all in on this. I do still use my Epson V700 for medium format and 4x5 film, but I definitely see myself doing rolls of 35mm on this system a little more regularly in the future. Camera scanning still feels like a weird topic, and while it has become progressively more and more popular, I do advise a lot of people from just immediately jumping on the hype train. Because again, things are expensive, and how much film do you really scan at home? It's just interesting to think that this is where we have gotten, and these are products that are being released for this side of film shooting. You're taking a picture of your film with a digital camera. I would say that it kind of distorts the whole analog experience of using film in the first place, but there are a lot of people who never set foot in a darkroom for making prints ever, which of course is perfectly fine. I just think that there's a more stuck up side of the film community that maybe needs a little bit more uh, self-awareness sometimes. Lab quality scanners like Naritsu's and Frontier's are incredible machines that are designed and dedicated for handling color and scanning film. DSLR scanning operates on like an entirely different kind of level in comparison to those dedicated machines, but that's not to say that it isn't worth it and that you can't get good results when you're using this kind of setup, especially with products and accessories and holders and copy stands and light sources and everything that are being introduced by people to grow this community and improve what's possible when you're doing camera scanning yourself. And as I've experimented more with camera scanning, I've found that I do enjoy it. It's a very like hands-on kind of different process of scanning and handling your film in comparison to using a flatbed scanner or just like having somebody that you never meet do it in a lab somewhere. If nothing else, I'm hoping that camera scanning results in a lot of people actually sitting down with their negatives, looking at them, understanding the information and everything that the negative holds, what's possible with film in general. At the end of the day, I'm not really that concerned about people on forums yelling at each other about macro lenses, pixel counts, camera sensors, and all of that garbage. If you're having a good experience shooting film, and if you're taking pictures that you personally enjoy, and if you're learning and growing within this hobby and this community as you're doing it, then scan however you want to scan. For the Veloy stuff, I've definitely really enjoyed using the holders and the advancer, and I definitely hope to see them grow the product line as time goes on. Masks for different medium format frame sizes is a really good idea that they're already offering soon, along with masks for half frame options on 35 millimeter. Maybe some answer or solution to being able to scan 35 millimeter with sprocket holes, film borders, whatever you want to call them, because that does seem to be something that uh, is a defining choice for when people are buying these products. I also want to add that there was a ton of different information and research and varying opinions about camera scanning that I was getting lost in when I was looking at this stuff myself. But the Valoi website has a really accessible guide concerning what cameras and lenses and gear to consider at different price points. Even if you're not interested in the Advancer and the holders or any of the Valoi products themselves, but you are interested in just kind of having a basic understanding of maybe what's involved and the different kind of costs that can go along with it and some alternatives to some of the really high end options. And I do recommend checking out the website because there is some great information there. So final word on this is definitely something I do recommend. There are a lot of choices out there and I have not played with all of them. I have done a lot of research and I've looked around at most of them, but this is the one that I got my hands on and I really had a good and easy time just using this and just capturing some frames for camera scanning. And if you do want to pick some of this stuff up, then I have a bit of a discount for you. If you're interested in picking up any of the Valoi stuff, then check my link in the description to receive 10% off for the next week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, check out the Valoi uh, website and all the information there because there are some great resources on this stuff. Also, merch for Analog Resurgence is available. You can check that out in the uh, link in the description below along with the Analog Resurgence Patreon if you are in the mood to help support this channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you soon.